Bare Bones version 8 for your sending light guns. Alright guys, it's finally here. It's been out for a couple of weeks. I've been working through it. Wanted to put up a video that'll help you get through some of the issues or questions that we've seen come up over and over again. And hopefully get you guys up and running. Bare Bones 8 is built off of uh, Bare Bones 7, obviously, that Harry Dog put together. And the community has really come behind this. And I'd like to give a special shout out to, of course, Prince Rakeem and Cheeky and Luther Gone and some of the other members that have put a lot of love into this thing and helping us get something that's uh, really special for the community. We've added a lot of emulators and a lot more config files for the arcades so that you can play a lot more games. Anyway guys, let's dive into it and get this thing going. Alright Gunners, first thing you want to do, go ahead and get the Bare Bones version 8 downloaded. And once it's downloaded, you have to provide your own ROMs and CHD, BIOS, bin, Q, all the all the files that you need, you're going to have to provide except config files. We've got you covered there. Once you have it downloaded, go ahead and burn it to your card using uh, Belena Etcher is what I recommend, but you can use whatever you like. If you're using Barebones 7, don't worry, we also provide a guide down here on how to go ahead and migrate up to Barebones 8 image. Burning the image is pretty straightforward, but I have seen a lot of people with difficulties because they end up burning the file that they download. Make sure that you unzip this file, because the image file is what you have to actually burn. Included with the download is a readme file that tells you pretty much everything that was added to the BB-8 image. We've got a couple new emulators and a whole bunch of new configs and tweaks and fixes. So go ahead and burn the image file to your SD card and let's get started. Alright, now that we got it burned, we got to get the Wi-Fi up, so make sure you have your keyboard plugged in. Go ahead and go to RetroPie. And at the bottom where it says Wi-Fi, click on that, give it a second. And what you want to do is hit enter to connect to Wi-Fi. And once you get the connect to Wi-Fi list, it'll show you all the different wireless networks that are available. And you just select yours and then you're going to enter in your password, of course, and hit enter. And once it gets onto the network, it'll show you the IP. Then put that IP into one of your programs like FileZilla or WinSCP and then you'll be able to upload all your ROMs. All right, ROM time. Obviously you need to go find your own. I'm not going to show you where to get that. Uh, just be aware that there are different ROM sets. This is set up for MAME 2016 and MAME 2003 plus. Uh, LibRetro Final Burn Neo is also one that you can load ROMs onto. And the rest are pretty much basic for the consoles. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, the Dreamcast, of course, you can get the arcade version uh, for Naomi or Thomas Wave as well. But just look through the compatibility list. It'll show you which ones that are actually supported that you can actually play. And also check the columns and some of the instructions as it'll tell you uh, which emulator it's built for uh, or that we built it for. And some of them do require CHD files. Just make sure you check the other columns for additional information. Just be sure to put this in your favorites because this list changes a lot. We are constantly working to get new games added all the time. So if you're not sure if a game is supported or not, make sure you come to this page and refresh. All right guys, I got BB-8 burned, got all my ROMs uploaded, everything that I need. All I gotta do is plug in both sending guns, unplug everything else, just one USB controller. Just wanna make sure that these guns work. Okay, so if you have like 10 spinners and 50 track balls and four hubs, and unplug all that. Make it simple. Make sure your guns work first. First thing we're going to do is calibrate them. Then we're going to actually start testing on the games. So let's do that first. And as far as calibration goes, you only need to do it once. It saves it to the gun. You can move from the Pi to, you know, another Pi if you like. But it's all inside the gun, so you don't need to redo it. That's a good thing. So let's show you how to do the calibration. One other thing, make sure that you plug in your HDMI into the port that's closest to the power. The boot order on the USB ports determines which one is player 1 and player 2 for your send in light guns. So the boot order is the USB 3.0 stack from top to bottom, then the USB 2.0 stack from top to bottom. So just make sure that the player 1 gun is in a port that would boot up before the other one. And it's that easy. All right, let's make sure these guns are calibrated. When you load up the ports, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start up Send In Light Gun Test P1 and make sure you grab your gun and point it to the screen. 
We get so many questions about people saying that the test isn't working. And most of the time it's because their gun is not plugged in, okay? You don't have to start this send gun, send in gun process. So read the instructions if you need to calibrate it up to version 1.6 firmware, you can do it. Otherwise you gotta do it manually. But this one looks pretty sharp. Um, you know, cursor's moving, so I'm just gonna exit out. So do the same thing for send in light gun test number two. As soon as you start it, grab the gun, make sure you point it at the screen. It's, um, also make sure you're not standing too close. Make sure the contrast and brightness are good. I'm in a pretty bright room here, but everything's working. Also, you'll notice on the screen, you saw some segmentation faults. That's normal. We know about it. Don't know what is causing it, but it has no effect on the calibration, as you can tell, or the movement, and no effect on the gun working. So that's it. So now we can start up non-recoil or recoil. Um, go ahead and do start player one, and uh, then we'll do a start player two if you're doing console games. And we'll do a start player two arcade if you're doing like Naomi or Dreamcast, uh, MAME, uh, MAME 2003 plus, you know, any of the arcade games. But if we're just gonna do console, then you do start player two like PSX. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start up the arcade for player two. That way we can play uh, some arcade games and check this out. So let's go over to skip, skip, keep going. There it is, arcade. We've already done some of these. Let's do Beast Busters, maybe. No, let's do Dragon Gun. All right. So go ahead and put your controller down. It's game time. All right, we're gonna exit out of Dragon Gun. A lot of fun, a lot of cool games here. Like I said, configs are ready to go. Should just be a plug and play kind of thing. Check the compatibility list. Let's try out Terminator 2. Oh yeah, Terminator 2. All right, we're gonna exit out and we're gonna go over to Nintendo. So what I'm gonna do, just to make sure the guns are started up properly, is first stop them. Because for Nintendo, we only need one player um, for a console or arcade. So go ahead and go to send in light guns, start player one. Then we're gonna go back to Nintendo. Everybody does Duck Hunt. Let's do Freedom Force, actually. Love this game. Let's try this out. things is a lot of people will test on Duck Hunt and they'll say well the trigger works but I'm not you know hitting anything and they'll automatically go to well the gun's not working. On the Sega Master System they have shooting gallery and the cool thing about shooting gallery is it allows you to actually see the missed shots because Duck Hunt you don't see the missed shot you just see hit the duck or you don't. That's it. Um, so you use this as a test. The shooting gallery will let you see it. So you watch, if I miss, it shows me exactly where I was aiming. So this also helps with your aiming. So you shoot all these ducks. Bang, bang, bang. But if I miss, I'm going to shoot behind the duck. Shoot my ground. <laughs> I have to shoot right behind it. But see how it shows you where you miss. So that'll really help in troubleshooting the gun. I highly recommend using shooting gallery. It's also a very fun game. So check it out. Let me stop the guns again. Make sure everything's good. Start up player one. Start up player two. Okay. Go to PlayStation. Point blank. Let's check out point blank. All right, guys, wanted to show you something really interesting with uh, point blank and some of the PlayStation games. The calibrations are kind of interesting. For example, watch this. Point blank, I'm doing the calibration player one. You don't see it. Go ahead and hit the A button and we'll continue though. You just shoot at the X. Same thing, or crosshair. Same thing for port, uh, player two. 
you're not going to see the site. Okay, on Point Blank 2, you will see the Player 2's uh, calibration. And I believe Time Crisis, you also see the actual uh, calibration for Player 1. But, you know, it just it is what it is, guys. It's something that we uh, we know about. There's nothing to do with Sendin. That's just how the ROMs play. One of the things that you can do is create a save state. And if you set it to auto load, auto load, then it'll go ahead and boot up with the calibration already done and you'll skip that whole process. Definitely recommend it. So anyway, guys, let's check it out. See how it runs. Yeah, yeah, I know. I suck. OK, I'm not very good at this game. I'm too close to the TV and yeah, I'm not good with my left hand. Whatever. All right, one of the things I wanted to explain real quick is there's a huge difference when you calibrate guns with the Dreamcast, Naomi, and the Thomas Wade. We're gonna get into that real quick and I'm gonna show you because there is a little bit of a glitch on uh, Thomas Wade, especially on the sake of clay shooting, it's a little hard. I'm gonna show you that uh, Ranger mission thing, the other one. Uh, really fun games, but when you go into the service mode, if you exit that mode, it will lock you up. There we go. Alright, so start button. Start button. Alright, so we're going to go down to options, A button, and adjustment. Alright, player one. Boom, 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 and how does it look? That looks pretty good. So move to the left, press A for OK. Okay, now for player two, grenade launcher, boom, 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 and that looks pretty good, go to the left, and shotgun launcher. Now when I exit out of this, you should see it saved. Save. There you go. Now you're good to go. So let's go to the mission, make sure this works. Start on both. A group of international press B button to skip. Mission. Skip. To... Oh, skip. All right. Just use red gun for now. Bang. 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 Reload and shoot up. I think you can shoot down. I'm gonna try. You'll never get this disc. B button. Skip. Okay. Shoot you down. Shoot down. Okay. Yeah. So you can shoot down when you want. So I have it. I shoot up. But, you know, let's try player two. Six times. <laughs> Before you hit the ground, you will be shot five times. Okay. Let's get out of here. Nice. No, we have have to That's how you do green test. Very simple. It's not letting me in there. Why not? I did that on purpose. I wanted you guys to actually see this. A lot of people don't know. And if you read the instructions, it'll tell you. Mm. <laughs> Controls. Well, that's because player one is a light gun. Okay, so what you want to do is go over to control it, and then back out, and zoom. Now, when you hit the uh, left thumb stick, okay, it goes into the service screen. Ooh. Okay, so select the service button and press the test button. So these two buttons are service and test. So the right one, okay, is your uh, service button. I know that's your test button. I'll tell you cycle through. Okay. So what we want to do is go to game test mode. We're gonna go down to game test mode and hit the left one. Okay, so we're gonna go to what we want to do. Gun settings. Alright. Player one gun adjustment. Okay. Now when I do this, I'm not gonna be able to control the gun because this is a controller. So, you need to go back, go to options, oops, I always do that. Go to controls, switch it back to a light gun. Ah. There we go. And now I can calibrate player one. So as I move it, you'll see a change. You gotta shoot inside this square, or sorry, the circle. Boom. Shoot inside the other one, boom. And yeah, that actually looks pretty good. Okay. So start one to memorize or start two to cancel so there's start one i want it to memorize that now the only way i'm gonna be able to move this cursor is if what that's right i go right back to controls 
And that's right, make it a control. Uh, okay. Now remember, you only have to do this the first time. Once you have it all calibrated, it's gonna save as an NV uh, ROM or AE prom file, and you can actually uh, remove those if you want to redo it, or if it's not quite working for you, just delete those files, okay? All right, so we're gonna go down to player two, gun adjustment. Pick up player two gun. And that's about centered there. And that's about centered there. Yep, that looks pretty good. All right, now it says to memorize, I need to hit uh, test on start one. Now remember, I changed this to a controller, so I can't hit start until I make it a light gun. Ah. Go resume. Start. Okay, now both guns are calibrated. Now, I know this is a little complex, but once you do that, you only have to do this once. Now, how do I exit out of this? Well, you guessed it. You gotta go back to controls and redo the device type to controller so you can actually navigate. So go down to exit. Well, ah. down to exit. Okay, and don't forget, in your controls, port one, and light gun. There you go. Now we're ready to lock and roll. Let's get that. And start the player two. So I'm gonna shoot him in the head. Now we're gonna move through the nuts. <laughs> See player one is good in the head. Reload is working. And the next one's gonna be in the nets. Yep, pretty accurate. Next we're gonna do a Thomas Wave, which is very different. Okay, same thing. We're gonna go down to control. And we want to make this a controller so that we can actually uh, go into the menu. Sorry guys, was having a little bit of an audio thing and noticed that it wasn't very loud so I decided to do the voiceover on this part too. Anyway, so once you hit your L3 button, what you want to do is go into the test mode. Once you're in the test mode, you'll go into the I.O. settings. And once you're in here, the gun adjust, what you got to do is switch your controller back, obviously, from a control pad back to a light gun. That way you can actually adjust it. So go ahead and switch back to light gun. And then this adjust works a lot like the Sinden and the PlayStation 1 where you're aiming at the X and every time you pull the trigger, that's where it centers. So it gives you something to aim at. For player two, just pick up the gun. It'll have its own cursor as well. Same thing, just squeeze the trigger as you're focusing in on the uh, target and it'll center itself and save as well. Now the very, very important key here, uh, difference between the Thomas Wave and Naomi is once you get out of this uh, test session and you go back to the regular menu, uh, service menu, the main menu here where it has exit on the bottom, if you click that, you will freeze the Thomas Wave, okay? You have to reboot your Pi. It's a glitch, it's, you know, it is what it is. Use your hotkey and start button, whatever you set that to, so that you can exit out of the game. Don't worry, your calibration settings so in the NVRAM and EEPROM files will be written out so don't worry but that's the way you can exit out of the game safely yay we don't ever have to do this for ranger mission again <laughs> anyway let's exit out of here and have some fun also guys if you want some additional information about how to set up dreamcast and naomi and a thomas wave uh, roms and the folder structure there's a link here in the above that you can click on and check that out All right, it's working good. Last but not least, let's do Daphne, or Hypsia Singe, the latest one that we've added. One of the new emulators lets you play full motion video Laserdisc games, uh, such as Who Shot Johnny Rock? That's what we're gonna check out. If you're into full motion video, you'll love these games. If you're not, well, 
skip these games. <laughs> it's that simple. Setup of the Daphne ROMs is pretty easy. There is a README inside the folder that you need to put the ROMs into. Definitely read it and check it out. It will definitely answer your questions, but if you still have some issues, let us know. Also be aware that if you are getting the Daphne ROMs, for the Pi 4, it's recommended that you get the MPEG-2 coded versions. The MP4 ones usually don't work that well. Now we're just going to have a little bit of fun. Let's see some other games. Now with Sega Genesis, uh, the Menacer was plugged into Player 2. So when you play this game, you have Player 1 as uh, the Joypad, right? And Player 2 is the Menacer. So, move this around, right? The yellow cursor. Boom, there's my grenade. And then I got my machine gun. I love the body count. It's actually kind of fun. I wish you could have two light guns. It'd be pretty cool. Ah! Oops. I got the wrong gun. Oh, there it is, yeah. <laughs> See how it's actually shooting from the right side? That's because this was player two, or this is player two. So it would be over there on the uh, you know right side of the screen. Oh, I missed the grenade. There we go. The body count's actually a really cool game. I mean, you think about Sega Genesis, you don't think of shooter games, right? Super Nintendo. Alright. Shoot the screen. Boom. Now this one actually does have a in-game. Well, calibration, which is pretty cool. All right, so you get a radar at the bottom, and the bullets are, you know, from a 3D perspective, they're using the Mode 7 graphics here, so um, it's not like instant laser. You're shooting out missiles to hit something, so you gotta time it right. Something's coming up on my right. There it is, about right there. Bam! Boom, 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 boom. We're going to end it on a little time crisis. Why not? Also on PlayStation, uh, check the compatibility list. There are new uh, uh, GunCon uh, patches that are applied. Um, I might cover that on another video if you guys want me to on how to actually do that. So time crisis, you actually get the um, crosshairs on the calibration screen. You don't get that in point blank. Um, but I can cover the new uh, gun con uh, patch if you guys want me to. It's not too hard um, to apply. That way you can actually use the gun on games like, uh, I think, Crypt Killer, Die Hard Trilogy, and a few others actually require uh, the new gun con patch. So, the button to the reload. I actually want to change that because as you're holding the reload, it feels like you're pulling the gun a little bit. So. Good, starting off all right. You better put your head down. Shot your leg out, boy. Anyway, guys, it's been a lot of fun. BB-8's got a lot of love into it. We put a lot of time and effort into this. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Hopefully it covered some of the things that you may run into uh, when you load up BB-8, how to load up BB-8. Uh, don't forget, when you do load up BB-8, even if your SD card is 256 gigs or 128 gig, whatever it is, it will go ahead and expand to that. Uh, it was designed with uh, uh, Pi Shrink scripting, so it allows it to expand to the whole file system as soon as it's been imaged to the SD card. So as soon as you boot it up, it'll do that automatically on the next boot, okay? Uh, so I think I've covered pretty much everything. If not, hit us in the comments below, or definitely hit us up in Discord. We'll do our best to help you out in the Pi channel. Until then, catch you later.